food. Prepare it incorrectly and it can make us sick or even worse. Food-related illnesses are on the rise, but most can be prevented. The preparation and cooking of food has changed dramatically over the last 100 years. No longer do we leave frozen meat on the kitchen counter at room temperature to thaw. Scientific research has shown that improper food handling, preparation, storage, or bad personal hygiene can and will result in food poisoning, sometimes referred to as foodborne illness. Foodborne illness, commonly caused by bacteria and viruses, is defined as any illness that results from eating contaminated food. Symptoms of foodborne illness include upset stomach, abdominal cramps, nausea and vomiting, diarrhea, fever, and dehydration. Symptoms can be extremely mild to severe, sometimes requiring hospital stays. Each year, the Center for Disease Control estimates that in the United States alone, foodborne illnesses cause about 76 million illnesses, 300,000 hospitalizations, and about 5,000 deaths. Good personal hygiene and proper food handling play an important role in the health and well-being of not only yourself, but to those whom you also serve. Most foodborne illness outbreaks are a result of contamination from those that handle the food. Sanitary food handling, proper cooking, and refrigeration should prevent most foodborne illnesses. This training program will provide valuable information to help you and those people you serve stay healthy. The contents of this program will include health codes, personal hygiene, steps to food safety, and other safety rules. There are many ways in which food can become contaminated. As with any business, rules and procedures should be established, implemented, and followed. As part of this effort, health codes have been implemented. Health codes play an important part in keeping food safe for consumption. Most municipalities and local governments have set minimum standards for establishments that serve food to the public. The codes cover a wide variety of topics and are enforced on food service companies from the local hot dog stand to large hospitals. Restaurants, institutional food service areas, establishments serving alcohol and other eating food preparation areas must comply with these local, state and federal health department codes, fire codes, smoking and alcohol regulations and other regulations as they relate to the food service industry. As a food service employee, you should understand the local health codes and implement them every time you prepare or serve food. Frequent and proper hand washing is one of the easiest and best ways to prevent foodborne illness. Your hands build up germs throughout the day as you touch various surfaces, things, and people. This can lead to contamination of yourself or the food you are preparing. Always wash your hands before and after preparing food. When working with food, you should always wash your hands anytime you touch a non-food item. It is important to note that gloves must be treated in the same manner as you would treat your hands and should be washed or replaced anytime they become contaminated or are suspected of being contaminated. There are other instances when you should wash your hands, and they include after you handle money, after shaking someone's hand, before and after you eat, after using the restroom, after coughing, sneezing, or blowing your nose, after changing the diaper, before and after treating wounds or injuries, before and after touching a sick or wounded person, 
Use common sense. If you think your hands need to be washed, do it. Don't take chances. It is important to wash your hands properly. The recommended procedure is to wet your hands with running water, apply soap, and lather well. Rub your hands vigorously for at least 20 seconds outside of running water. Scrub all areas, including under your fingernails, between fingers, and back of hands. Rinse well. Dry hands with a clean towel and use a towel to open the restroom door as you leave. Good personal hygiene is extremely important when working in the food service industry. Some basic hygiene rules are to shower and wash hair daily, wear clean uniforms or clothing, keep fingernails clean, do not wear fingernail polish. Hair restraints should be used at all times. Limit jewelry to wedding bands. Remove other jewelry before starting work. Sneeze and cough into the bend of your arm. Move to a non-food area before sneezing or coughing. Do not touch your face, hair, or other parts of your body while working with food. Restrict bare hand contact with ready-to-eat foods and ready-to-serve foods. Use approved gloves for handling food items. Never eat, drink, or smoke in the food service area. Preventing foodborne illness can be mostly achieved by following the guidelines contained in the four steps to food safety. Clean, separate, cook, and chill. Not only is it important for you to be clean, but your work area and adjacent work areas must also be kept clean. As stated earlier, hand washing is one of the best ways to prevent food poisoning. Thoroughly clean and sanitize boards, knives, food containers, countertops, and prep areas between food items, especially raw and uncooked items. Wash cutting boards with hot soapy water after each use. Then rinse with clear water. Sanitize cutting boards with a solution of one tablespoon of liquid chlorine bleach to one gallon of water. Cover the surface with the bleach solution and allow it to stand for several minutes. Then rinse and air dry or pat dry with clean paper towels. Non-porous acrylic, plastic or glass cutting boards and solid wood boards can be washed in a dishwasher. All cutting boards wear out over time. When a cutting board becomes excessively worn or develops hard to clean grooves, it should be discarded. Consider using disposable paper towels or special disinfecting wipes to wipe kitchen surfaces. If you use cloth towels, rinse and sanitize them often using the bleach solution in very warm water. Replace sanitizing bleach water often and replace towels as they become dirty. Wash dirty cloth towels in the hot cycle of washing machine daily. Rinse all fresh fruits, vegetables, and other food items as applicable with clean running tap water. Keep refrigerators, freezers, coolers, and walk-ins clean and sanitized. A cleaning schedule should be created and followed. Separate food items to avoid cross-contamination. Cross-contamination is the transfer of harmful bacteria to food from other foods, cutting boards, utensils, etc., when they are not handled properly. Always use a clean cutting board. It is a good practice to use one cutting board for fresh produce and bread, and a separate one for raw meat, poultry, and seafood. By using different boards, this lessens the risk that raw meat, poultry, or seafood will contaminate foods that require no further cooking. Keep raw meats, poultry, and fish away from already cooked or ready-to-eat foods and produce. Thoroughly clean and sanitize boards, knives, and prep areas between food items, especially raw and uncooked items. Never place cooked or ready-to-eat foods in or on a container that previously held raw meats, poultry, fish, or eggs. Use clean gloves, tongs, forks, spoons, 
paper, and other serving utensils. Never use your bare hands to handle or serve food. Replace gloves anytime that they become contaminated from touching non-food items, such as your face, trash, or the floor. Always serve food on a clean plate. Frozen foods should never be thawed on the counter or in hot water. There are three approved methods for thawing foods. The first method is to thaw in the refrigerator. This is considered the best method. Plan ahead because this may take a few hours or a few days. Place the item in a pan to contain any blood or juice that can drip as the item thaws. Place the item on the lower shelves. After thawing in the refrigerator, most foods will need to be cooked within one to two days. Another method to use is running cold water. Place the sealed frozen item in a container that will allow total submersion and place in a sink. Turn cold water on so that a constant flow is running into the container. Water pressure does not have to be strong. Foods can be thawed quickly this way. The last method for thawing is using a microwave. Food items defrosted in the microwave must be cooked immediately because some areas of the food item might begin to cook during microwave defrosting. Use a properly designed food thermometer to measure the internal temperature of cooked foods, especially meat. Keep the thermometer calibrated for correct readings. Be sure to clean your thermometer with hot soapy water before and after each use. Raw meat and poultry must be cooked to a safe minimum internal temperature. Color is not a reliable indicator of doneness. Different meats are safe for consumption at different internal temperatures. When roasting meat and poultry, use an oven temperature no lower than 325 degrees Fahrenheit. Roasts, steaks, and fish should be cooked to an internal temperature of at least 145 degrees Fahrenheit. Poultry to 165 degrees Fahrenheit, and ground beef to at least 160 degrees Fahrenheit. Finally, eggs should be cooked until their yolks and whites are firm. These temperatures are considered the minimum for safety purposes, but can vary as to the doneness required for quality purposes. Always follow cooking guidelines on recipes and packages. When using a microwave for cooking, keep in mind that they do not cook evenly. When microwaving, cover the food with appropriate covers and rotate for even cooking. If there's no turntable, stir and rotate the dish by hand once or twice during cooking to make sure it cooks to the same temperature throughout. Be careful as the dish may get hot. It is essential as a food preparer that you watch out for bacteria growth. Bacteria grow most rapidly in the range of temperatures between 41 degrees and 140 degrees Fahrenheit, doubling in number in as little as 20 minutes. This range of temperatures is often called the danger zone. Foods should never be held in the danger zone. If mishandled and left in the danger zone for too long, bacteria may grow and produce toxins, which can cause food poisoning. Some toxins are heat resistant and not destroyed by cooking. Such food items may not be safe to eat even after cooking to the proper temperature. Remove the smallest amount of food items possible from the freezer and refrigerator for prepping or cooking. This allows food to stay out of the danger zone until needed. Always marinate foods in the refrigerator, never on the counter in the danger zone. Marinade sauce that is used on raw meat, poultry, or seafood should never be used on cooked foods unless it is boiled just before using. Hold cooked hot foods in food warmers, steam tables, or on hot surfaces at temperatures of at least 141 degrees Fahrenheit or higher. A food warmer thermostat setting should be set higher than 141 degrees to allow for cooling of the warmer from being open and shut. Be sure to turn on warming units early so that they are ready when you need them. Reheat leftovers to at least 165 degrees Fahrenheit. Bring soups, gravies, and other sauces to a boil when reheating. Hold cold foods or leftovers in a refrigerator, refrigerated display case, in ice, or other approved method. 
Always hold refrigerated foods at 40 degrees Fahrenheit or less. Keeping foods cold or frozen is vital in preventing foodborne illnesses. Proper storage, cooling methods, and clean refrigerators and freezers are all important factors in food safety. When you receive a shipment of food from a supplier, unload perishable foods first and freeze or refrigerate immediately. When storing food items, keep them at least six inches off the ground. Foods in the freezer should be kept at zero degrees or below and refrigerated product at 40 degrees or lower, but not below freezing. Air must be able to flow throughout the refrigerator for proper cooling. Keep refrigerator coils clean. Do not overload walk-ins. Place raw meat, poultry, and fish on bottom shelves. Items should be placed in leak-proof containers to keep blood and juices from dripping onto other foods or the floor. Cook or freeze all food within two days. Another common cause of foodborne illness, and often overlooked, is the improper cooling of cooked foods. Even after food is cooked to a safe internal temperature, bacteria can be reintroduced to the food and then reproduce. For this reason, cooked food must be put in containers and refrigerated within two hours of cooking. The six steps to cooling food are, wash your hands, Place food in shallow metal pans not more than two inches high. Cut roast and turkeys into sections no larger than four inches. Place uncovered food items in cooler or refrigerator. Do not let cooked food sit at room temperature for more than two hours. The quicker it is refrigerated or frozen, the better. Leave space for cold air to circulate around the hot food pans. When food is cooled to below 41 degrees Fahrenheit, then cover it. If necessary, hot foods can be rapidly chilled in an ice bath before refrigerating by placing the pan of food into another container of ice. All food products, both fresh and leftover, should be covered tightly and clearly labeled with its name, date and time of preparation, and expiration date. There are additional safety rules you should follow. You must properly rotate the stock, use first in, first out, or FIFO method to ensure freshness of all product. When using an automatic dishwasher, make sure it is working properly. Water temperature is correct, and final rinse has the proper concentration of chemical sanitizer. Regularly scheduled maintenance is a must, and many jurisdictions have inspectors that will view the maintenance logs. Three compartment sinks must be used correctly. Wash in first sink, rinse in the middle sink, and sanitize in the last sink. Check often to ensure the proper concentration of sanitizer is being used. Rodents, bugs, and other insects are not only bad for business, but can be bad for your health. For pest control, it is generally best to utilize the services of a professional pest control company. Keep dumpster lids closed and the surrounding area clean. Food safety is easy if you follow the rules. If you don't think you have the time, then think again. Always follow food safety procedures when you prepare a meal. It is an important part of your job. Someone's health, your company profits, and your employment all depend upon it. Take a few minutes more to do the job right. A meal done right is one that everyone can feel better about.